You can also use that notation to set the value of an object's property. You use the equal sign or the assignment operator, just as you do with variables. For example, to update the name property of the student object, you assign it a new value like this. In fact, you can even create new properties to an object this way. For example, to add a city property to the student object, you would write this. This rule not only adds a property named city to the object, but also assigns a value to it. Now let's look at an example. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript Objects. And then open the index.html file in the browser. Here I also open the JavaScript console. In the index.html file, remember to link setValue.js file. In setValue.js file, we'll find the code that we wrote in the previous lecture. What we have here is one object called student with five property value pairs and a message that we created using the different properties of the student object. And finally, we display the message in the console. Now let's try to update the value of the student object's full name property. In the message, I'll add a space at the end, then type most people call me dollar sign curly braces student dot full name assignment operator Joni. And period. I'll save the change. Refresh the page. Notice the original full name property value John Smith and the new value after updating it, Joni. If I type student into the console, I'll press enter. It returns the updated student object with the full name property set to Joni. You can also add new properties to an object using that notation. If I add new nickname property to the student object, I'll do it like this. I'll type student dot nickname and assign it the string Joni then in the message I'll update this part to student dot nickname I'll save the change. Refresh the page. Then I'll type student into the console. I'll press enter. Now it returns the student object with a new nickname property and value inside it. You can also perform math using properties set to numeric values. For example, at the end of the message, I'll include next year I will be dollar sign curly braces student dot age and plus one and period. Now the age property has the value of 36. By adding 1, the value displaying in the message will be 37. I'll save the change, refresh the page, and here's the new message we just added. Good! You can also access the properties of certain values. For example, the good add property is set to an array. You can use the length property on that array to return how many things the student could add. I'll add another sentence at the end of the message. It says, I am good at dollar sign curly braces 
things. And period. Again, student is the object and good at is the property name. Between the curly braces, I'll type student dot good at dot length. Since the value assigned to good at is an array of string values, you can access the length property of that array like that. I'll save the change. Refresh the page. And here's the new message we just added. You can also access methods of properties in a similar way. For example, at the end of the message, I'll add and they are dollar sign curly braces and period. To return a list of all the things the student good at, we can use the arrays join method like this. We learned about the join method in a previous lecture. Here I start with the object student, then access the good at property dot good at, which is an array, then use the arrays join method on that property. I'll pass it a string containing a comma and a space. That way a comma and a space appear after each element in the array. I'll save the change. Refresh the page, and here's the new message we just added. Good. As you can see, working with object properties isn't all that different from working with variables. And objects are well arranged packages of information that holding data you want to use in your code. So up next, I'll teach you how to loop through an object properties using a special loop called for in.